everybody say thank you lord thank you lord we have reasons to be grateful to him he has done great and mighty things praise the lord praise the lord look here praise the lord in mark chapter 16 in verse 19 and 20 mark 16 verse 19 and 20 so then after the lord has spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Tonight, you will experience wonders. Tonight, you will experience signs and wonders. Right here now, with ease, because of the presence of God in his life, is going to declare the word of God, you will receive miracle with ease. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Today, you will glorify the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that gratitude of heart that the Lord Himself will give you uh, come out of the great things the Lord will do. And everyone here and there, at the back, in the front, here, the Alpha location, as well as online, everywhere, it'll wipe your tears away. It'll take your problem away. And whatever it is, you are asking the Lord for miracle today, wonders today. And the Lord will grant you a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We glorify you because you are a great God and a mighty God. And with you, all things are possible. We're asking, Lord, tonight that you'll move in an unprecedented manner in Jesus' name. And we pray that every problem, every sickness, every depression, every mental problem, Every demon will get out of the way of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles tonight. Amen. Salvation tonight. Amen. Healing tonight. Amen. Deliverance for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray today the assurance in your people. Amen. Unshakable assurance that you are the God of wonders and the God of power. Give it to everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Look at the person beside you there and say the amen eyeball to eyeball. Tell them it will happen. Tell them it will happen. The Lord is with you there. Miracles are waiting for you. Sit down with assurance that today the Lord will do and perform the wonders in your life. We're coming to Isaiah today, chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. It says, The Lord of hosts as swan saying surely as i have thought so 
shall it come to pass think about that as i have thought my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my thoughts so are my ways and so is my power greater than whatever you have and god said i have thought so shall it come to pass as i have purpose so it shall stand he has purpose that you will be saved that will stand he has purpose that you will be healed and that will stand he has purpose that deliverance redemption is available for you tonight nothing from the sky nothing from the sea and nothing from around you will hinder the purpose and the plan and the power of god in your life tonight in jesus name it shall stand it shall stand i'm looking at isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 isaiah chapter 40 i'm reading there from verse 28 it said as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting God is the God who had been from all eternity. He had solved the problems of the people from all eternity. And from the uh, dawn of the day in the world, he has always solved problems. And he said, have you not heard? If you have not heard, I'm telling you now. He says, have you not known? If you have not known, I'm telling you, declaring to you now that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, Creator of the ends of the earth, it says, He fainteth not, neither is weary, and there is none, no searching of his understanding. And then in verse 29, it tells us, He giveth power. You are powerless, you are having power tonight. You are weak, you are having power tonight. You are feeble, you are having power tonight. And you are shaking to the very foundation of your life. Power comes your way tonight in Jesus' name. And you've been bedridden, bedridden that you don't even have the power, the strength, the energy to rise up and walk and talk and see and move. But power comes to you tonight. Every feebleness, every sickness, every infirmity, the Lord will take away tonight in Jesus' name. Why? Because He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no understanding no might he increases strength in verse 30 it says in verse 30 even the youths who are supposed to be strong courageous and fearless and bold even the youth if they depend on their natural strength and natural ability even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men the power of the nation the young men shall utterly fall but now in verse 31 he tells us but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength it says they shall mount up as uh, with wings as eagles they shall run somebody is right, ready to run there the strength of their honor the focus of their honor the vision of their honor and the perspective of their honor and all the hindrances on the chase they're broken they're taken away and now he wants you to run towards your destiny he wants you to run towards everything he has prepared for you and he says that they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not fail somebody shout amen. amen how and why will all this take place what's the foundation of the fulfillment and the performance of the word of god in your life look at isaiah chapter 53 and i'm reading there from verse 4 is this surely he christ he emmanuel he the one that is to be born he said he has borne our griefs he has carried away our sorrows and yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted in verse 5 it says in verse 5 but he was wounded 
for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Somebody shout amen. amen. With his stripes we are healed. I'm looking at verse 6. There's something here that is beautiful about verse 6. And I'll read it to you now, but let me tell you what I'm telling you that's wonderful. There's a man, there was a man, an evangelist, great, great evangelist, and his name is D.L. Moody. He had come to town and he had done a great crusade, a mighty crusade, and many people have given their lives to the Lord and but there was this man this man was in that crusade he didn't give his life to the Lord he wasn't saved all of a sudden conviction came upon him I must be saved and D.L. Moody was already at the train station and then he was already in the train but he was by the window by the side of that train in his cabin and the man ran ran he wanted because the train was about moving up moving on and then the man shouted Moody, I want to be saved. What do I do? And Moody said, All at the beginning, enter. All at the end, you're saved. All. Then he said, Go read Isaiah 53, verse 6. All at the beginning, everyone in the middle, all at the end. I come to tell you tonight that the wonder of salvation the wonder of healing the wonder of deliverance is now available for all at the beginning all at the end everyone in the middle look at that verse now chapter 53 of isaiah i'm reading from verse 6 it says all we like sheep have gone astray all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and we have turned everyone to his own way and then he says now all at the beginning all have sinned everyone has turned his own way and now he says and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and you can enter you can come in because salvation is now available for all and for everyone and anyone that will turn away from sin anyone that will believe on the lord jesus christ now all can be saved and you will be saved tonight healed tonight delivered tonight you are set free tonight you come from outside all I've seen all in the world you have seen and now you say I'm like everybody else I feel the guilt I feel the oppression I feel the sense of punishment awaiting me like everybody else. But thank God that the Almighty God has laid on him, on Christ. Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, and Christ the Deliverer. The Lord God in heaven has laid on him the iniquity of us all that's why tonight all your sin will be taken away laid on christ that's why tonight the power of sin will be broken in your life because christ has born it all everyone all i'm talking to you tonight on unshakable assurance of wonders in god's word unshakable assurance that means you have the faith you have the trust you have the confidence that you know that you know beyond any shadow of doubt that your sins are laid on christ that your sicknesses are all laid on christ the blindness the deafness the cancer the ulcer the hunchback the, the tummy and the swelling everything laid on Christ and tonight you are free yeah. I am free yeah. unshakable assurance of wonders in God's word three things we're looking at number one the promise of wonders 
in his will. What's the will of God? When some bad things happen to people, they say, that's the will of God. They say, I'll go through that. When somebody is born in a condition like, you know, born blind or born deaf or born lame, or, they say, that's the will of God. And they say, I'll stay like that. What's the will of God? The will of God is her joy. The will of God is her happiness. The will of God is her deliverance. The promise of wonders in his will. Number two, the performance of wonders through his word. The performance of wonders through his word. Number three, the power for wonders as he works. He works. He works. He's still at work. At the work of creation, he created man. And then he goes on walking and walking. He doesn't want us to be idle. He is not idle. He wants us to keep on walking. He is also still walking. And Christ confirmed it and said, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. The Almighty is still at work. At work to save, is mighty to save. At work to heal, is mighty to heal. At work to deliver, he is mighty to deliver the power for wonders as he walks. Look at number one. Number one is the promise of wonders in his will. What's the will of God? What's the will of God in my particular situation? Can I tell? The leper came to Christ and said, If thou wilt, he was not sure. It was not certain what God, what Christ will do. That's why he said, if thou wilt, if you're willing, then you can make me whole. And Jesus put every doubt out of existence. And he said, I will be thou cleansed. And the leprosy went away. And tonight, immediately, your problem will vanish away. Look at you. Isaiah chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 14. And they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. And they shall cry aloud from the sea. It's telling us what the people will do. And then what you will do, look at verse 26 there. In verse 26, it tells us what he will do. It talks about his will. It talks about his power. It talks about his performance. What he will do. Isaiah chapter 24. We're reading from verse 26. In verse 26, Isaiah 24, Isaiah 24, verse 26. Whoever is handling the message or something, the your screen is freezed, and I cannot, um, you know, get that verse 26. We're coming now to Isaiah chapter 46, and we're reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46, and we're looking at verse 10. It says in verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Look at the promise of God, and look at the declaration of God, what he said he will do. He said, are you feeling the burden of your sin? Are you feeling the agony of the punishment to come? Do you sense what will happen if God does not show up? But now he says, I show up. 
I know what you are going through. I know the problem. I know the challenge. And he declared the end from the beginning. And, the, and he has now, from the ancient of times, he has declared what has not yet been done, saying, my counsel will, will stand. The counsel of Satan will not stand in your life. The counsel of evil people, evil powers will not stand in your life in Jesus' name. It says, my, 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 it's heaven talking. It's the God of heaven talking and declaring to us. And it says, my counsel shall stand and I will. And when God says I will, nobody can say no in your life. It says I will save you, salvation will come. It says I will deliver you, deliverance will come. It says that everything you had planned from the beginning of creation until now, it says everything will stand. I will do all my pleasure. It will happen in Jesus' name. I say chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 9. I say chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 9, and it says, It shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Somebody shout amen there. He will save us. That, that's a sinner like sinner. I know how far I've gone. I know how deep I've gone. And I know I've scattered my life, destroyed my life by sinning. And I know the habitual sin, the common sin, the uncommon sin. I know the sin that I cannot get rid of by myself. I try. I punish myself. I restrain myself. I try to kind of gird myself so that I will not continue in that sin, but I could not. But now he says, he has a confession. He has an assurance. And he says that this God will save me. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. He will be, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Tonight, you rejoice in his salvation. Tonight, a salvation will come straight, expressway, unto you right there and change your life and renew your life and transform everything in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 33 and I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 24, it says, And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. He says, he'll so take every sickness away, every infirmity away, that the inhabitants of the kingdom, the citizen of the kingdom, the people who have turned away from sin, from darkness, and from evil powers, and they have come unto the Lord, he said, those inhabitants will not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Do you see the connection? But when God created man, there was no sickness until sin came. It was a sin that brought the sickness. It was a sin that brought the, 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 the disease. It was a sin that brought all those negative things in our lives. But now he says, because they are forgiven, because they are saved, and because their lives are turned around and they live now for the glory of God. He says, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The Lord will take away every sickness from your body tonight, every sin from your life tonight, and things are going to be very different, totally different, entirely different from your life in Jesus. Because it's the God, the God of covenant, and the God that assures us, and the God that says, I'm still alive, and I want to bless you, and I want to take everything of sin, everything of sickness, every satanic attack out of your life, and he said, whatever he purposes, and whatever he wills, that is what he will do. Congratulations, blessing upon your life tonight salvation coming to you tonight and healing coming to you tonight it will save you it will heal you 
Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 55, and we're looking at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, incline your ear. That means pay attention. That means uh, throw away your former thinking, your former thoughts, because a new word is coming to you. A new assurance is coming to you. A new blessing is coming to you. Incline your ear and come unto me. Incline your ear and come unto unto me as you want the salvation of the lord tonight there's one step you need to take you need to come out of where you are come away from what you have been doing come away from the past life and come unto him unto him that implies you're being with a stranger and that stranger will destroy your life come to the lover of your soul you're being with satan he didn't create you all he can do he cannot improve on the work of god in your life all he can do is to decrease you diminish you and destroy you and he says come away from the destroyer and come to the deliverer and tonight the Lord will deliver you completely in Jesus name incline your ear if you are hearing other voices if you're hearing the voice of Satan you are hearing the voice of unbelievers you are hearing the voice of your past life he says shut that up and now come unto me as you incline your ears and hear and your soul shall live I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. That's what he will do. He gives us assurance. Whosoever comes unto me, I will in no wise reject. He will not turn you away. You are coming today. You are coming with repentance. You are coming with a sober heart. And you are coming with a willing mind. And you are saying, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I'm willing to put my past in the past. I'm willing to bury all those uh, things, the dead things in my life. And the deadliness in my life. I want to bury that. And I come to the God of resurrection that will give me life. It will give you life. And then it will make an everlasting covenant with you the show mercies of David how do we come it tells us right there look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us how to come it says seek ye Lord seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near it says at this time look at people getting saved by your right hand look at people getting healed on that side there and look at people getting healed and delivered at the alpha location and look at people getting healed and getting saved and getting delivered and getting blessed right there on like they said this is the time that you seek the lord while he may be found and you call upon him while he is near look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord let him return unto the lord let him return unto the lord at the beginning we were with god and then satan came separated us from God and we have been separated from God all these many years and the separation has brought terrible sins terrible sickness terrible suffering and terrible havoc trauma into our lives and now it says you know where man was at the beginning of the creation that time when we were with God we had peace we had joy we had security and we had victory, we had freedom, but now it says, since Satan, the old serpent, the devil, the dragon, has pulled us away from the place of peace and assurance, it says now, let him return. 
unto the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul. We say we've been far away from God. We've been far away from the Prince of Peace. We've been far away from the God of salvation. And now we want that salvation. We desire that salvation. We desire that forgiveness. And we want that new life by all means. And he says, yes, you can. God is still where he was. A holy God. A righteous God. An unchangeable God. He's still where he was. We are the people that went away. And now he says, let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. As you return tonight, there will be mercy for you in Jesus' name. It's the mercy of salvation. It's the mercy of answered prayer. It's the mercy of a changed and transformed life. It says, let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you tonight in Jesus' name name and then look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your are your ways my ways says the Lord in verse 9 it says for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts in verse 10 he gives us assurance he says for as the rain cometh down so your salvation will come down today and so your healing will come down today and so your deliverance will come down today as the rain cometh from and the snow from heaven and to return and returneth not hither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud. It says that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Then it says in verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of salvation. It says so shall my word be. The word of healing. It says so shall my word be. It says the word of deliverance. The word of power. The word that works miracle. That works wonders in our lives. It says as the rain cometh down from heaven and does not return there without doing what the Father, the God of heaven, has sent that rain to do. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of God will prosper in your life tonight. The word of salvation will prosper your life tonight. And the word of healing and the word of wonders and the word of deliverance, everything, the promise of God, the promise of wonders in his will will be done and achieved in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Somebody there will shout, Amen. I'm coming to point number two now. Point number two is the performance of wonders. When we really know God, we know that God is a God of action. Action according to his word. Action according to his promise. Action according to what he has said he will do. That's what brings performance. And it's always working, always working, always working. And it works upon everyone the promise he has given to anyone in any nation in any continent in any city anywhere he fulfills the promise he is the god of action and the god of performance number two the performance of wonders through his word we're looking at isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8 it says in verse 8 the grass withereth and the flower fadeth. What is this saying? It's saying, man, 
like the grass, and the word of man, like the flower, they may use flowery language, and they may use a kind of interesting, attractive language, and you hope in them. But the words of men, and the promise of men, and the activities of men, like the grass that withers, and they're like the flower that fades away. It says, the grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. You missed a great amen. amen. The word of our God, the word of salvation, the word of our God, the word of healing, the word of our God, the word of deliverance, the word of miracle, and the word of the promise of doing wonders, it says that shall stand forever. Uh, uh, you understand there are different people when they read the Bible, they don't uh, read the Bible with their natural eyes, their natural mind, their natural understanding. Some people, uh, they wear some colored glasses, theological, gla theological glasses, when they read the Word of God. And so they say that the word of miracle has passed away. They say the word of healing has passed away. Why did they read that? Because here it says the word of our God shall stand how long? Forever. And those, uh, you know, people with uh, theological shade, glasses on, they say the word of God, the promise of God, the power of God. God has passed away. They said when the last apostle died in the first century, they said, since that time, the power of God has been taken from the earth. Remove your glasses. I don't mean the ones you are wearing to read the Bible. I mean those denominational glasses. Remove them. And let's read it right now. Are we ready? I said, are you ready? The grass withers and the flower faded, but the word of our God, my God, the God of my salvation, the God who heals, the God who delivers, and the God who sets free, it says, the word of our God shall stand forever. That word will stand in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I see chapter 44, and we're reading from verse 28. I say chapter 44, verse 28, that's